Sniffle, piss, whine, moan, shit yourself, I don't care. After you're finished shitting yourself, you can shove your opinions up your ass. Don't forget the ever-present, the most likely third possibility. You are wrong and I am right. Welcome to another edition of Stating the Obvious, brought to you by the Sinful Libertarian Society. I am, of course, the great one himself, your host, Skippy. In the control room is the lovely, the adorable, the Republican, Randy. What what the hell is today? You know, this is the problem with not having to work, is you lose track of what day it is. It's the 29th. It's already the 29th of my... Today is the 29th of December, 2005. Here's coming to a close. Whip the fucking do. Like, I care. But you, know, you always have to talk about that shit. Now, the year is coming to a close. All the magazines caught the year in retrospect. The year in pictures. The magazines for the stupid readers have the year in pictures because you're too stupid to actually read the articles. So we'll give you the year in pictures. These pictures, of course, always involve pictures of Republicans in rich, posh settings, pictures of Democrats helping the poor people of the world and pictures of the poor people in the world suffering with the implication that, of course, it's caused by the United States of America because we are, of course, the source of all evil on the planet Earth. Not just the United States, of course, but specifically white men such as myself. We've covered this before, but as you all know, as a white man, I virtually have the power of a god because as a white man, I personally enslaved all the black people from Africa. I personally am destroying the environment. I personally have suppressed women and kept them from being able to get good jobs. By the way, all you fucking women out there who want equality and shit and you complain you can't get a job, come see me. You can have my motherfucking job, okay? Oh, what the f- and what the fuck is it? Randy, what the fuck is it with you women? It is windy outside. We have the windows here at the palatial recording studios of the Cynical Libertarian Society open, so you will occasionally hear the wind blowing through. It's been nice, beautiful for days, all of a sudden now. Today, I wanted to go out and do photography, and the temperature drops just a little bit. It's still sunny, but it's windy as hell. It sucks ass. Yes, I know, I'm very random. What was I talking about? Oh, yes, dumb bitches! Yes! As if there were any other kind. What is it with you dumb bitches and this desire you have to get into the workplace? As a man, let me tell you something. Having a job is not the fucking wonderful thing you think it is. I wish I didn't have a job. And you women are out there going, well, we want to get a job. Why? What the fuck for? I totally felt, you know, I'd love to marry some woman and she'd just support me. I could just stay at home, watch soap operas, watch the kids, you know, do some dishes and shit. That'd be wonderful. But no, women actually want to go into the workplace. I don't know what the fuck is wrong with you people. Mm Mm-hmm. Right. All right. Where's my list? (laughs) I have a list here. (laughs) We're just going to go over a few random things that have just been picking on my ass. Some of them have been crawling out of my ass. Some of you have been crawling up into my ass. Let's go over... While we're talking about women, let's go ahead and do this one. While we're talking about women, George Carlin has totally lost it. I've watched the last couple of HBO comedy specials by George Carlin, because my mother videotapes them and sends them to me, which is probably illegal. The FBI will be coming any moment now. How many of you people, when you put in a DVD or a videotape, and you see that little thing comes up and says, FBI warning, showing this in public forums or making copies is a federal offense. How many of you out there really get scared and go, oh, wow, you know, I better not make a bootleg copy of this DVD How many of you out there are really frightened by that? And here's the other thing. If terrorism is such a big fucking deal, if we're all in danger of being killed by the terrorists, I I saw somewhere just today, I found it somewhere, Dick Cheney saying something about, to to the effect of, the reason we haven't been attacked by terrorists in the last four years is not an accident, alluding to 
the implication that the reason we haven't been attacked by terrorists in the last four years is because Dick Cheney and Vice President Bush and all their little minions have been doing such a wonderful job of protecting us from the terrorists. Here's my motherfucking question. All right, if terrorism is such a big goddamn threat, why is the FBI running around worried about me making a goddamn bootleg copy of a shitty ass movie anyhow? And aside from that, who the fuck are these people in Hollywood making this shitty ass movies and putting them out that they think anybody would want to copy that shit? I mean, think about it. When's the last fucking time you saw a movie that you liked so much that you would want a fucking copy of it? The last movie I bought on DVD was Flight of the Phoenix, and not the motherfucking 2004 remake that had explosions and motorcycles. Motor, what the fuck is that? Motorcycles. They're on a goddamn airplane, crashed in the middle of the motherfucking Sahara Desert. I saw the previews. There's motorcycles. How the fuck did you get motorcycles in the middle of the goddamn Sahara Desert? What, is there a gas station down the road? Is there a Harley Davidson dealer somewhere near? What the fuck is this? How do you... You're in the middle of the goddamn Sahara. No, I bought the Flight of the Phoenix, the old one, with... What's his name? Richard Attenborough and... Oh, James Cagney. That is a great movie. If any of you out there have not seen the original Flight of the Phoenix, you need to go see it. Get the DVD, rent it, buy it. It's worth it, trust me. But nobody is making any movies in this day and age that anybody would want to fucking bootleg. And even if they were, why is the FBI worried about shit like this? If there's all these terrorists out there who are going to kill me because they hate freedom so motherfucking much, then why isn't the FBI doing something about that? What was I talking about, Randy? Oh, dumb, that's right, dumb bitches. All right, on the subject of dumb bitches, George Carlin has lost it. I've seen his last couple of specials on HBO, and George Carlin is not fucking funny. Now, some of the things he says are true. Some of the things he says are not true. Some of the things he says are relevant. Some of them are not relevant. Some of them are just plain stupid. But here's the critical fucking thing. George Carlin is billed as a comedian, not a social political, economic, philosophical commentator. And when it comes to being a comedian, George Carlin is not fucking funny. I mean, I sat there through an hour and 15 minutes of George Carlin routine. I didn't laugh at a single goddamn thing. The man's not funny. He's lost it. And the more I thought about it, here's something I've really trying to come to grips with, is I'm thinking really hard, and you know something? I can't remember George Carlin ever being funny. I mean, when has George Carlin ever actually said anything that was funny? Seriously. I mean, think think about it. I'm ask, I'm telling you, think about this. When's the last time the man ever said anything funny? I can't remember ever laughing at anything. I can think about other comedians. I can think I can remember Richard Pryor routines that were funny. I can remember Robin routine, Robin Williams routines that were funny. I can remember Eddie Murphy. I got some ice cream. I got some ice cream. And what you what your you motherfucking sh- Aunt Bunny? She's a motherfucking Bigfoot. You your goony goo mobile ass and get the fuck out of here. Yeah, you know, I mean I can I can't think of one thing George Carlin's ever fucking said that was funny. Why do people think this man is funny? And he's standing on the stage during this thing. He's all humped over. He looks like this little fucking hobbit. And he's got this look on his face like he's constipated. He's just a hateful, boring, stupid, cynical... I'm cynical too. I can't fault him on that. (coughs) Hateful, boring, stupid, hobbled up, Republican-hating, liberal, Democrat, dick-sucking, cocksucker on stage just venting. And people are paying money and they're clapping. The audience hardly even laughed. And they were obviously there because they agree with the son of a bitch and like him. And they didn't think it was all that funny. <sighs> Something to stupid bitches. Did I mention that George Carlin has lost it? Something to stupid bitches. I, got, I want to give you females out there some tips. First of all, well, nah, that doesn't go, well, that could be, that's, that's going to both. Females, when you're going out, on a quote-unquote date. I use date because, as those of you who know me know, I don't date. I hang out with women. I fuck women, whatever, but I do not date because dating is, of course, a process where a man spends money on a woman, or in some cases, another man, with the hopes that if he spends enough money on this other person, this person will have sex with him. 
And of course, that is for losers. I do not date, but I do go out with women. I don't spend money on them. I do, you know, try to get the pussy. Ladies, women, girls, females, bitches, whores, cunts, whatever the fuck you're called this week. I don't know, okay? Women, women. <laughs> I was about to say women with vaginas. Okay, women with vaginas and also men with vaginas as well, if there are any men out there who have a vagina. If you have a vagina, it look, if, now if you're not sure... Drop your pants, look between your legs, and is there something hanging down? Or do you have like this hole going up in there? Okay, if you've got the hole going up in there, because remember, remember Randy, public school, they may not have learned yet in public school the difference between a boy and a girl. I mean, just because you got a high school diploma doesn't mean anybody explained to you the difference between a pussy and a penis. Public school, do I have public school on the list? Public school has been getting out of my ass lately. No, I, I don't think I do. All right. Where was I? Oh, yes! If you have a pussy, listen to what I'm about to say to you. First of all, when you're out with somebody who has a penis, turn your fucking cell phone off, okay? I have endured, I have endured for the last fucking time in my life some bitch that I'm hanging out with talking to somebody on her cell phone. I have endured this for the last fucking time. Women, girls, cunts, Pussies, hoes, bitches. Turn your fucking cell phone off. You know, if you don't have enough respect for the person you're talking to, to turn your goddamn cell phone off and pay attention to him, or her for that matter, then why the fuck do you think this person should have any level of respect for you? This is one of the problems with the younger, stupider generation, and the older, stupider generation, and the people who are exactly the same age as me, and also stupid. It's a problem with all of you out there. All of you seem to think that respect is supposed to be given to you, but you don't have to give it to anybody else. Mm -hmm. No, no, I'm not bitter. She was a boring bitch. I don't ever want to see her again anyway. I'm doing this, Randy. I am doing this as a public service announcement. I'm not doing this because I'm, you know, some bitter... Uh, rejected man who's in the bathroom masturbating thinking about this chick that I can't score with. I mean, she was hot, but she was stupid. And as you know, I like my women non-stupid. Which is, of course, why my selection for potential sex partners is so incredibly vastly limited. Because I only like to fuck women who are, number one, not stupid, and number two, bisexual. Which means there's only, like, what, 17, 18 women on the entire planet that fit into that category. What was I talking about? Oh, yes! All right. Bitches, turn your fucking cell phone off. Show a little respect for the person you're talking to. And don't be sitting there text messaging. That is just fucking lame. That is fucking lame. Next thing, bitches, make eye contact. When you're talking to somebody, fucking look them in the eye. If you can't look the motherfucker in the eye, it's real. You know, we're not stupid. If you never look at us, we know what really is going the fuck on in your mind. And then we know that you're really not interested. But since you don't just say, well, I got to go, you're just drawing it out because you're either too fucking spineless to just say, look, I don't like you. Fuck off. Or you're sitting there hoping that I'm going to buy you dinner or something. And then you won't have to get the pussy and you'll at least get a free meal. And you don't get shit from me. I didn't spend, well, I, I bought her a bagel. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mandy, my coffee's getting cold. So there you go. Bitches. It's a little fucking advice for you. Interpersonal relationships. It doesn't just have to be dating or potential mating or anything else. This is just every fucking day shit. As you go through your life with your little fucking cunt and as you're walking around with your pussy hurting and you're whining about how you're not equal and how men are keeping you down. Well, white men specifically because as you know, we white men all walk around with our hands on top of your heads pushing you down to keep you from going through that precious glass ceiling. Because God knows, we wouldn't want any of you women to come in the workplace and actually do any fucking work like we do. No, we want to have all the fun ourselves. As you're going through your miserable, worthless, little cunt-laden lives, look other people in the eye, make some fucking eye contact, turn off your goddamn cell phone, and hey, maybe you might be able to move up in the job place. You ever think about that? Maybe if you made some eye contact with your boss and didn't spend all day talking on your cell phone and actually did your fucking job, maybe 
you'd be able to get a motherfucking raise and a promotion. That segues me so nicely into this next part that I'd like to talk about. Why is it that the most discriminated group of people in the workplace are the single men? You know, I work with this bitch. Her name's Monica. She's like 40 years old. She has two kids. I think they have the same father, but I'm not sure. She's divorced. She gets drunk all the time. She drags into work hungover when she drags in at all. She constantly comes in late. She constantly leaves early. She is always standing around up front talking about some guy she saw in a bar when she was drunk that she wants to fuck. She's constantly leaving work going, I have to go to my kid's wrestling match. Or I have to, she, told, she told me one day, I have to leave work early. I'm like, why? Well, I have to take my kid to the principal's office. I'm like, your fucking kid has been in public school for how many years and he's too fucking stupid to find the principal's office by himself? You have to take the little motherfucker to the principal's office? The whole time I was in school, my mother never one fucking time had to come into school and take me to the principal's office. I knew where the motherfucking principal's office was. Believe you me, I got more licks in that motherfucking room. I was in trouble all the time. I could find the principal's office with my fucking eyes closed. Her son can't find the goddamn principal's office. And these and you women are out there going, well, we can't break through the glass ceiling. Well, maybe that's because your little bitch ass is never at work. And these excuses are accepted as legitimate by management. Ah, oh, well, Monica's drunk. It's okay. She can come in later. Ah, oh, well, Monica's got to go take care of her kids. You know, if I came into work and said, hey, I need to leave early, they'd be like, why? Well, you know, I got, a couple of, I got a couple of girls at home. I need to go fuck. Oh, that's not a legitimate excuse. Monica comes in. Well, Monica, we need, I need to leave early because I have to pick my kids up from school. Oh, well, go right ahead. Shit, let us roll out the red carpet for you. Don't, is there anything we can do to help you? Can we buy you a new car? Can we put some gas in it for you? Maybe we could have Adrian drive you over there so you don't have to actually drive yourself. That way you could get stone drunk and come in late to work tomorrow, hung over and not do anything but stand around up front and talk about the Broncos and some guy you saw in the bar that you want to stick, that you want to have him ram his dick into your pussy. I mean, fuck. And then you can stand around and whine about how you're discriminated against. Oh, you women, you're so fucking discriminated against. You can't break through the glass ceiling. You can't fucking show up for work on time. You can't show up for work home sober. You can't make it through an entire eight-hour workday without having to go home to take care of your fucking kids. But no. Oh, you're so discriminated against. Oh, woochie boo 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 Do I have anything else on my list about that? <clears throat> oh, yes! <laughs> I'm having a good day, Randy. How are you in there? Yeah? Good. <laughs> and this brings us to equality. Equality in America. In this country, when we have a lot of weird phrases that mean different things. For example, in America, when we say freedom of speech, I believe in freedom of speech. What they actually mean when they say that is, I believe in freedom of speech for people who agree with me, but people who disagree with me, they should be silenced. Another word we use in this country that nobody really understands the meaning of is equality. We think we must have equality in the workplace. Now, of course, white single men must come to work every day on time, work eight hours or more, not leave early, not come in hungover, not stand up front and talk about the Broncos. But women, we have equality. Women can come in whenever the fuck they want. If they're hungover, you can't say anything to them because, after all, she's only 40 years old. It's not like she's gotten out of her drinking phase yet because women are immature. And if she has to leave early to take her child to the principal's office because her child is too fucking stupid to find the principal's office by himself, that's okay too. See, that's equality. And then, of course, we have to promote them to management. One good thing about putting women in management is that it's easier to get away with shit because if your managers are there watching you, you can't get away with shit. But if you have women managers, they're never at fucking work because they can't ever make it there. You pretty much do what the fuck you want, right? One good thing about having women in management is they're not there to actually do their job. Of course, that's, well, their job is to control the employees and they're never there to control the employees. Equality. We talk about equality in this country. It amazes me how we have this bizarre notion of giving breaks to groups under some sort of auspice of equality 
or some shit. Let me just give the examples here and not try to explain it. We say we're giving a break to one group when we're actually doing is punishing another. For example, when we say, well, Monica needs to leave early to take care of her children, we say that, well, we are giving her a break because she has children. No, what we're actually doing is we're punishing the people who don't have children. That's what's really happening. When we say, well, we're going to make churches tax-exempt, churches don't have to pay taxes on the money they get. This is a break for the church. No, it's a punishment for everybody else. If I get money, I have to pay taxes on it. If the church gets money, the church doesn't have to pay taxes on it. I'm being punished. This is not a matter of the church is being rewarded, the church is being given a break. I'm being punished. When Monica gets to leave early and I get to stay late and do her job, she's not being given a break. I'm being punished. Taxes is, of course, the greatest example of this. This is why I'm in favor of the flat tax. The entire tax code is full of punishments for specific groups of people. For example, if you have children, you can write your children off on your income tax, right? Now, here's a question. Why should I, as somebody with no children, be punished and be forced to pay more taxes than somebody who does have children. Because let's think about this for a minute. A family with two children, aren't they using more resources, using more of everything else than, say, for instance, a single person living by themselves? So why should the family of four people who consumes more resources pay fewer taxes than the person living by himself or herself? Shouldn't four people pay sufficient amount of taxes to support whatever goddamn government programs are being foisted upon our society that are paid for with taxes and used by these four people? Why the hell is it you have children, you get tax breaks? I'm sorry, in if you have fucking children, you should pay more taxes because you and your goddamn children are consuming more motherfucking resources. I have a real, I have a real problem this week with breeders. I am fucking sick of breeders. For those of you who may not be in on the lingo, breeder is a derogatory or at least semi-derogatory term used by homosexuals for heterosexuals. They call us breeders because, duh, we breed, you know, male, female. And some of you probably did not learn this in public school because you were taught that God created the world in six days. And if you just, the only way you should not ever have sex until you get married and that way you don't make any babies and never get an abortion, blah, 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 what the fuck ever, okay? See, men and women, the man sticks his wee-wee in the woman's hoo-hoo and they go, ha, ha, ha. And then he goes, ah, and the woman goes, was that it? And then nine months later, a little baby pops out. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, that's how it works, Randy. That's how it works. What do you want me to do? I'm just trying to explain to the fucking people out there who went to public school how this shit works. Okay, so that's why homosexuals call us breeders. And I use the term breeder in a derogatory manner myself, and I see all these little couples with their little fucking babies running around, especially here in Fort Collins, where we are so environmentally sensitive. And you see these couples with these babies, and they've got their babies in these baby stroller carriage things, and they've got all this shit hanging off of them. It looks like a fucking gypsy wagon in Transylvania or something. And these things, they're huge. They're like fucking SUVs. They're giant. I mean, they're like two babies wide. Some of them, three baby. I've seen like three fucking baby baby carriages. They take up the whole goddamn sidewalk. They have these giant fucking monster truck tires on them and shit. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you people? And then these people take their kids into all these public... I'm, you know what? I am serious about this. I am serious. I want you people to listen to what the fuck I'm about to say. Because I am so serious about... There is no joking here. There is no fucking joking. There needs to be a leash law for children. I am not fucking making this up. These people, these parents... Well, parents, I use that term loosely. These I actually I use the term people loosely also. These pieces of shit, these breeders who think they own the world. The, remember, these breeders who get a fucking tax break for making these little fucking monsters. 
Not only are these not only are these people imposing themselves on my life, these people are coming into my favored places and ruining the ambiance and having their little kids squealing and yelling and running. Oh yeah, that story. I gotta, and making all this noise. Not only are these people fucking disturbing my peace of mind while I'm trying to read in the coffee shop, but these little fuckers are paying less taxes than I am. They're getting rewarded for creating these little piece of shit monsters who are going to grow up to be even more fucked up than teenagers are today, as if that were even imaginable. What was I talking about? Where, where did I start? Oh, yes! All right. <sighs> there should be a leash law on children. Because these people come into public places, their kids run wild. Where was I at the other day? Oh, yes, I was in Avos, over in the stage room. And this woman was in there with her fucking kid. She was, I'm getting, well, never, I was about to make some assumptions that I can't make. Never mind. She was in there with her fucking kid. And she was playing music for somebody who was listening to her. And while she was playing her music, this kid was running wild all across the stage room. He was throwing something up against the wall. He was beating on the wall. The whole walls were reverberating. And when it was all over with, when this kid's finished making all this fucking noise, and this bitch is getting ready to leave, she goes to him and goes, Oh, you were such a good boy. You were so patient while mommy was playing her music. And I'm thinking, what the fuck is this cunt whore bag talking about? If I had a child, and my child acted like that little son of a bitch acted in a public place, I would have beat his ass until blood ran down his legs. It's like, what the fuck are you doing taking things and throwing them across the room? If you goddamn breeders out there can't teach your little fucking monsters any better goddamn behavior than that, you people shouldn't be breeding. And I'll probably get to that, because I, I still haven't done it. I've got it lined up, though to do that piece on why some people shouldn't be allowed to reproduce. And this is one of those things that as a libertarian comes hard for me. Because on one hand, when I'm faced with this notion to say that some people shouldn't be allowed to reproduce, I mean, obviously, this in, in, infringes upon your personal freedom. If you're choosing to reproduce and somebody's telling you you can't do it. I mean, that's, that's a fucking no-brainer. Okay? That, that is an imposition on your personal freedom. But the problem is, some of you people out there don't fucking understand that your breeding is imposing on my personal freedom. Your breeding is imposing on my freedom to have money because you're getting the tax break for it and I'm carrying your ass financially. You know, you fucking welfare mothers out there are breeding and I'm paying all your goddamn bills. And then you people are bringing your little shits out into public places and letting them run wild and disturb not just me but everybody else who's around there. And I'm seriously, I'm, I'm teetering on this whole, should people be allowed to breed shit? It's, it's a tough decision, because you people just think that you can just make your little fucking babies and it's okay. But when your little fucking babies cost me time, and cost me money, and cost me peace of mind, and cost me money, and act like idiots in public and you don't do anything about it and cost me money, then your little fucking breeding results start to become my problem. And this is where libertarianism kicks in. It says, you know, as long as your problem is just your fucking problem, it's personal freedom. Your problem becomes my problem, then there's a motherfucking problem. What else do I have on this list? Let's see. I'm, yeah, I've talked about how I'm subsidizing their little fucking kids. Let's see what are you, oh yes. Well, I'm talking about shitheads. Let's talk about people in Colorado. I have two questions about people for you people from Colorado. Number one, I have never seen people more obsessed with a football team than the people around here. Even Dallas Cowboys fans are not as fucked up as Broncos fans. Never. I mean, it's like the only thing people can talk about in this fucking state. How about them Broncos? I don't know. How about John Elway licks my nutsack? Who gives a fuck about them Broncos? Are you people really such goddamn losers that the only thing you have in your life is a goddamn football team? I don't give a flying fuck about them goddamn Broncos. Shut up about the fucking Broncos. If you are from Colorado, shut the fuck up about the Broncos. Nobody gives a fuck about the Broncos, okay? Have we established that? Are we clear on this? 
Okay, the Broncos suck testicle sweat. Second thing, people from Colorado. I've been here, what, seven years? Eight years? Eight years? Every winter, I hear the same shit. Wow, it sure is cold outside, and look, it's snowing. You're shitting me. It's winter, it's Colorado, it's cold and it's snowing. And you're surprised? Why every... F and then... The other day, I'm out. I'm wearing shorts and a t-shirt. It's like 60 degrees. The sun is shining. There's people walking past me, bundled up like they're in fucking Antarctica. Like, what is wrong with you Colorado pussies? The temperature goes below 70 and you act like you're going to freeze to death. Why are Coloradoans such goddamn pussies when it comes to cold weather? Look, Martha, it's cold outside. No shit, it's January. It's winter. It's Colorado. Of course it's cold outside, you stupid son of a bitch. Why don't you go watch the motherfucking Broncos and shut up? What's this? Oh. <laughs> I watched. Uh, I watched. What is it? Return of the Living Dead 4 and 5. Uh, Return of the number 4 was called Necropolis. And number five was called Rave to the Grave. Yes, and they were as bad as they sound. Although, there was one good thing that came out of it. I discovered this person. And yes, she's a chick and she's hot. Actually, I discovered two hot chicks. I watched this weird vampire movie from Sci-Fi Channel with this babe named A.J. Cook. Mm-hmm, she's luscious. And then, in the... Night of the Return of the Living Dead movies. Night of the Living Dead, different thing. In the Return of the Living Dead movies was this little muffin named Amy Lynn Chadwick, who it turns out is an actress and a singer and musician. So I've been listening to her some, some of her music and everything. It's pretty good. So anyway, but these two movies, I had to make two observations about these movies. First of all, how is it in movies like these, the teenagers are always so much smarter than everybody else? The, these, the first one was the typical movie where the teenagers, you know, they break into this high-security complex run by the evil corporation, because in these movies, it's always the evil corporation that's doing everything bad. You know, but these teenagers can break into this high-security complex, and they get all these guns, and they're mowing everybody down, and all that shit. Where did these teenagers learn to, you know, jerry-rig security systems, and make bombs, and shoot AK-47s and all this stuff. I mean, are these the same teenagers who can't even function when you take their cell phone away? I mean, if real teenagers tried to do something like that, they'd be in the middle of trying to break in and their cell phones would be going off. They'd have to stop. Oh, it's my friend. I have to text message him. I love the way in movies, teenagers are so goddamn smart. In reality, they're so fucking stupid. Second of all, I noticed in these movies, and this is common in movies too, and it cracks me up every time. You ever notice how, for instance, okay, so they've just survived the attack. Oof. They're standing there in the hallway, and they've got their guns, and the guy says, I'm going upstairs. I have to rescue my parents. Now, you know that's bullshit, because the average teenager, given a situation between saving his own ass or risking his life to save his parents, would be like, man, fuck them. They ground me. They put me on curfew. Man, fuck those motherfuckers. I'm out of here. I have to go rescue my parents. Are you with me? You know, and the other one goes, I'm with you. And he takes his gun and he goes, chick, chick, and he cocks the weapon. Is Okay, you've been doing all this shooting of the zombies and everything. Your weapon is already cocked. Okay, if you're cocking your weapon after combat has already started and happened and finished, you weren't doing anything during combat, okay? I've been in the military. I've used weapons. You cock your weapon before you fucking go into combat. If you cock your weapon like that, all you're going to do is spit a round out. It's going to drop, and then you have one less bullet to shoot the bad guys. But in these movies, these people always do this shit. I'm with you. Yeah, me too. And I am also. Watch, I'll cock my weapon because it looks really cool. Because I don't have to worry because I'll run, never run out of ammunition because I have a limitless ammunition clip, just like Rambo. Who the fuck makes movies? And, the, and of course, these movies are preceded by that little warning from the FBI. If you duplicate this movie, the FBI will stop worrying about those terrorists that are coming to get you and come get you for duplicating this movie. Why you would duplicate this suck-ass movie is totally beyond us. But hey, we don't have anything better to do with our time. Because we are the FBI. We are the government. 
We are incompetent morons. Our managers are all women. None of the women are here because they're all home, either hung over or taking their kids to wrestling matches. So we're just here at the FBI headquarters running wild. We don't have any supervision at all. Oh, my God. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh. Um. <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> Randy, can you imagine? We got our first woman president. Oh, I'm sorry, I can't go to the peace conference. My son has a wrestling to match tonight. <sighs> I'm sorry, I was late for the press conference. I was at the bar last night. I got really drunk and... So I just now woke up and I'm really hungover, but boy, the Broncos really played good last night and there was this guy in the bar. I really wanted to fuck him. <sighs> yes, sir. I can't wait for the first female president. <clears throat> Where am I? Let's see what's on this list now. I went. We have a we have numerous coffee shops here in Fort Collins, the king of coffee shops cities. We have a coffee shop named The Bean Cycle. It's well known by reputation as the hippie hangout. For those of you who may not have noticed this, I fucking hate hippies because they're always talking about saving the earth and how much they hate George Bush, but all they actually do is smoke dope and smell bad. The Bean Cycle is a well-known hippie hangout. I decided, I've been wanting to check it out for a while. Hold on. Mm. Big swig of water. You know, one of the problems with stating the obvious is we don't have commercial breaks for me to do things like drink water, so you have to bear with me once in a while. <clears throat> Bean Cycle, Hippie Hangout. I've been wanting to go there and check it out, so I finally did. I stroll. I go strolling into this place. It was a Thursday. We were off work for some reason. Oh, I think it was, maybe it was Thanksgiving. I don't know. I don't remember. It was a Thursday, Friday, something. It was afternoonish, 2 p.m.-ish. I go strolling in. I walk in. The first thing that hits me is the smell of Hippie. For those of you who aren't really around hippies, you don't know what they smell like. It smells like... What does hippie smell like? Hippie smells like fetid compost with body sweat mixed in. It's, it's this disgusting kind of musty, musky... Yeah, I don't really know how to describe it. It's nasty. I walk in the door, it smells like hippie. I'm like, oh my god. Then I walk a little further in, and these hippies are sitting there watching a movie about what an idiot George Bush is. I don't. I, I didn't see enough of it to really get, but it's just a bunch of talking heads on there talking about, oh, George Bush is stupid. Oh, George Bush lied about weapons, blah, blah, blah. You know, and all of these things may be true. I don't know what everything was in the movie. So, I, George Bush is a fucking idiot. I don't disagree with the lack of George Bush's qualifications to be an intelligent human being, okay? My point is this. It's 2 o'clock in the afternoon on some random weekday. Is this all you fucking dirty hippies have to do? Is sit around in a coffee shop and watch movies that already reinforce the things you already believe? This, this of course, is one of the hallmarks of stupidity. Is people who spend their time sitting around simply reading, watching things that reinforce the beliefs they already have. Not that I'm saying you shouldn't do that occasionally, but... I can guarantee if you tried to give these people a viewpoint different than their own, you would get killed. It, it, was, it, was, it was pathetic. So anyway, I meandered around a little bit. They have a bookstore in there also, which is of course filled with... Well, it's a hippie bookstore. You can imagine what kind of books are in it. I meandered around a little bit, and I couldn't stand the smell of hippie anymore, and I left. There will be no need to ever go back to the bean cycle and it's hippie smelling shit. Mm-hmm. I'm looking this oh yep, yep, yep. Mm-hmm. Man, I I'm I'm covering stuff pretty good here, Randy. I'm going down the list. Let's see. What is this? How are we on time, darling? Thirty nine? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Mm-hmm. 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 I'm trying to decide if I want to talk about all this again. Because I'm pretty sure I've talked about this before. 
And how many times can, well, any... How many times can we talk about 9-11? It was a question I was about to ask. But of course, Dick Cheney and Vice President Bush talk about 9-11 all the time. It's the only excuse they have. Just like Democrats don't have any excuse other than fairness. Republicans don't have any excuse other than terrorism. What was it? I'm trying to remember what was it set me off on this. Oh, yes! It was George Carlin. Back to dumb bitches. It was George Carlin in his incredibly unfunny comedy routine. This is what sent me off down memory lane again. George Carlin went into this old shtick by now, we've all seen it a million times, about how George Bush sat there in the room reading the story about the, excuse me, reading the story about the donkey or whatever the fuck it was for seven minutes while America was under attack. And why didn't he get up and do something? Now, I've said this before, and I'm going to say it again, because it needs to be said over and over and over. You people out there who fault George Bush for not jumping up and doing something, you're the same people who say that George Bush is a lying sack of shit, that he's an incompetent leader, that he's uneducated. Well, educated is an interesting word. That he's not smart... And he's not capable of proper use of the English language. And I'll agree with you on all of those things. And this is what's frightening. I agree. George Bush is a dumb fuck. George Bush butchers the English language. George Bush doesn't have the morals he pretends to have. George Bush is a little spoiled white boy who got where he got because his daddy has money. George Bush is an incompetent, cocksucking piece of shit who should be shot in the head. I completely fucking agree with you stupid cocksuckers on that. Here's what frightens the shit out of me. Why do you stupid fucking dirty hippies want this man in charge of anything? Why are you so adamant George Bush should have done up and do something? Do what? He's an incompetent fucking moron. His military tactical experience is limited to avoiding formation when he was in the National Guard. I mean, what the fuck is George Bush supposed to do? What do you think George Bush was smart enough to have done? You want George Bush to be in command of the American response to a terrorist attack? But George Bush was the last motherfucker I wanted taking charge during the 9-11 incident. What the fuck was he going to do? What would he know to do? George Bush did exactly what he should have done. Sit there and shut the fuck up. Because you don't know anything, you're not good for anything, and we really don't need you. You're just a figurehead anyhow. He did exactly what he should have done. Sit there and shut the fuck up. But no, you people, you sit there, you insult him, you talk about how stupid he's everything else, but then you wanted him to jump up and protect you. You jump up and take command. Why? Somebody give me a... This is what I... Again, you stupid, dirty fucking hippies out there. By the way, the email address where you dirty fucking hippies, providing you have electricity to send email, can contact me is god... That's dog spelled backwards. God at 204eastsouth.com. The website address for the Cynical Libertarian Society is, of course, 204eastsouth.com slash CLS, just like it has always been since day one. I want one of you dirty fucking hippies out there, if you've got the nuts to do it, and you know you don't, send me an email and explain to me what the fuck George Bush was supposed to have done in those seven minutes. I don't mean bullshit like or wave his hands and make it stop. I mean, I want serious fucking shit. I want you to tell me what do you think he was supposed to do. You're talking about a man who can't form a goddamn sentence with the English language, and you want him to take charge of the response of the entire... And, and what... And what... You know... It, um, how is he... What is he supposed to, to even take charge of? He's in a completely different fucking state from where the shit's have. What's he supposed to do? I mean, is he supposed to get on the phone and tell the firemen in New York City to go put out the fire? Don't they fucking know that? Isn't that their job? What's he supposed to do? Tell the policemen to go in there and, and arrest looters? What, to, I mean, what the fuck is he supposed to do? Is he supposed to tell the military, hey, go on alert? 
watch out for more airplanes crashing into buildings? Well, if the military needs to be told to do that when America's under attack, what the fuck are we paying all those billions of dollars for the military for? Anyhow, if the military needed, if you're a goddamn general or an admiral in the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, whichever branch, you're sitting there and you're watching TV and an airplane flies into the World Trade Center. And then a minute later, another airplane flies into the World Trade Center. If you are a high-ranking military officer and you need somebody to tell you America is under attack and you need to go to alert status and be prepared to defend the United States, then you don't need to be a high-ranking military officer. I, that's how the fuck it is, man. If you're sitting there waiting for somebody to tell you to do something, you need to be killed. If our military didn't have enough fucking sense to go on alert status on their own without being told by George Bush when that happened, that's just one more goddamn problem our military has. And our military has a lot of problems, in my opinion, because it's filled with fat people. It's filled with women who shouldn't be there. Fat people shouldn't be there. And it's also filled with stupid little punks who are only there to get money for college. I joined the military for one reason, one reason only. I wanted to kill people. I wanted to find people who were threatening the United States of America, and I wanted to kill them until they were dead, and then I wanted to kill them again just to make sure they were dead. If you're not in the military to kill people who are a threat to the United States, then you're in the wrong fucking place. And if military commanders on 9-11 needed to be told that they should go to high alert status and be prepared to defend America, then they should be killed also. So what the fuck was George Bush supposed to do with his big fucking ears and his monkey face? I want one of you dirty fucking hippies to actually tell me. I mean, if you give me a good answer, I'll admit that you're right. See, you people are out there are so fucking stupid. You think I just say this shit because... No, you give me a good answer to my question, I'll admit that you're right. But what the fuck do you people want him to do? He's an incompetent, stupid-ass fucking civilian with no combat experience. He had no shit about shit. What the fuck was he supposed to do? And you people wanted him to be in command. You wanted him to take charge. That's like asking your paper boy to take charge of your brain operation. That brings me to my other favorite point to make about 9-11. After I take this big drink of water. Nine eleven after effects, repercussions. The department. I feel like William Shatner. Spock, the Department of Homeland Security has been formed by George W. Bush, President of the United States, Commander-in-Chief. Mission accomplished. Weapons of mass destruction found. No terrorist attacks for four years. Not an accident. All because of Republican administration. 9-11 happens. The Republican government swings in action. What do we get? We're going to form the Department of Homeland Security. Why are we going to form the Department of Homeland Security? To protect the homeland. I've said this before. I'm saying it again. If the purpose of the Department of Defense, the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, and Coast Guard, isn't to defend the homeland, what the fuck is their purpose? And this is something we seriously need to look at as a nation. Our military is out there fucking defending every other country on Earth. Our military... I mean, we're still defending Europe from the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union doesn't even fucking exist anymore. The Soviet Union's been gone for how many fucking years? 15 years or some shit? The, we're still in Europe! What the fuck are we doing in Europe? We're still defending South Korea from North Korea. Fuck South Korea. Let the goddamn North Koreans have the fucking shoe factory. We're still defending Japan. We're all over. And, and then, of course, there's our wars. There's the Iraq War. We're doing that shit. We're doing humanitarian aid all over the fucking globe. We're doing errands for the fucking United Nations. You know, we're putting sandbags up in flood areas. We got the military down there in New Orleans. We got the military running, doing the drug war. You know, we got military people chasing drug dealers, which are only dealing drugs because drugs are illegal. If you legalized drugs, the drug traffic would end instantly. 
Our military's got time for all this shit. They ain't got time to defend the United States. Isn't that what the fuck they're for? Where the hell was the military on 9-11? They're all over the goddamn globe. They were scattered everywhere. They were doing all these wonderful, enlightened things. They were doing humanitarian aid. Oh, they were working for the United Nations. Oh, we were doing all this bullshit. We are tracing drug runners. We don't need a Department of Homeland Security. We have a fucking Department of Homeland Security. It's called the Department of Defense. It's what the fuck they're... That's why they're called the Department of Defense. They're supposed to defend the United States from aggressors, foreign and domestic. That is the motherfucking purpose of the military. Why do we need to spend billions more dollars on a Department of Homeland Defense? We're already spending billions of dollars on a goddamn Department of Defense that should be doing the fucking job. How are we on time, Randy? That's good, and I think I've covered my list. Let me look this over one more time. Stand by to play the music. I will give you the heads up in just a moment. Looking at this. Yep, hunting down drug dealers. Yep, humanitarian aid missions. Yep. Kids looking for college money. Yep, covered that. Bush, idiot. Yes, but why do you want him to protect you? Yes. Oh, and of course, part of the big part of the reason why everybody wanted Bush to swing in the action because so many people are just conditioned from the way our society is that when something happens, you hide behind the rich white man. You know, if you're a bitch and you've actually managed to show up for work, you don't show up for work very often. When you do, you show up late and you're hungover and you have to leave early because your kid has a wrestling match. But if you're at work, one of those rare occasions that you actually came to your job, because you can't get through that glass ceiling, you're so privileged. If you actually made it to work for a change, and you're in there, and you're sober enough to actually hear people talking to you, and some man says, hey baby, nice ass, what do you do? Do you turn around and go, fuck you? No, you run to human resources, and you hide behind a rich white man and say, I was sexually harassed. Why? Because you're too weak and stupid to just defend yourself. And the people of this country as a whole are the same goddamn way. Airplane flies into a building. What do we do? Oh, we run and we try to hide behind George Bush, a rich white man. George, go out there and protect us. You know, when this shit happened, you saw some of those people in New York. The building's falling down. They ran in there. They got people. They dragged them out. These, those people were fucking heroes. You people, you just want to hide behind George Bush because you're a bunch of fucking cowards. And it's true. Yeah, go ahead. It, yeah, fine. Play it. Do it. You people are pussy motherfucking ass cowards. It's that simple. So, oh, where's George Bush? Oh, I'm so scared. Oh, I'm a pussy. Oh, and glass ceiling. Oh, I'm discriminated against. Oh, wah, wah, wah. Little fucking pussies out there. You people are goddamn idiots. All right, what's gonna be next on this show? <laughs> What are we going to do? I Right now, I can't tell you what's coming up in the next edition of Stating the Obvious. I don't have anything lined up yet. Oh, I didn't talk about the Ten Commandments. Religion. Religion just means not having to think for yourself. That's all there is to that. I mean, the, oh, I'm going to have to do that one in the next one. We will talk in the next Stating the Obvious. We will talk about religion. We will talk about the Ten Commandments. We will talk about the way you people have no ability to fucking think outside of what you already know and how I think the human species or at least the ones in this country are becoming stupider and stupider every fucking day join us when we will be doing this soon